Hi, I'm OZ Hall. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. This video is episode 5 in a series on the Behringer RS9 Rhythm Sequencer. See a link in the description to the full playlist for this series. In this video, we're going to look at the features of the RS9 which allow us to easily take the complexity of our beats to the next level. But first, let me give you the best tip of all. There is no full manual for the RS9 Rhythm Sequencer. There's only a Quick Start Guide. The Quick Start Guide only contains a short overview of each function. Many of the functions that we will discuss cannot be easily understood from the Quick Start Guide. It would help a lot if there were a full manual for the RS9. Well, there is, sort of. The RS9 is basically an RD9 rhythm designer drum machine without the drum voices. As a result, all of the functions that we're going to discuss have a more thorough explanation in the RD9 manual. If you own an RS9 rhythm sequencer, by all means, download the RD9 rhythm designer manual. This manual is available from the Behringer.com website. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Now let's work on variations in our RS9 rhythms. You can create variations to a beat either manually or programmatically. The manual variations can be created in real time by interacting with the controls, particularly the step keys. These are the large computer style buttons on the right of the RS9 front panel. You can temporarily change the steps which are triggered for a particular drum to create fills or alternate beats. Note that the step repeat, note repeat, and ratchet are other examples which can be enabled manually. In this video, we'll focus on the features of the RS9 which allow you to create variations programmatically. These features include poly, or polymetric, which allows programming polymetric rhythms, see page 15 of the Quick Start Guide, RAND or RANDOM, which allows random notes or triggers to occur on selected steps, see page 16 of the Quick Start Guide, PROB or PROBABILITY, which allows the user to select the probability of a programmed trigger or note sounding on a specific step. See page 16 of the Quick Start Guide. Let's look at poly or polymetric. This allows programming polymetric rhythms. This changes the length of one or more tracks so that the resulting beat does not repeat as often. Let's listen to an example of a beat with tom fills. I've already set up the polymetric length on both toms, but the feature is currently turned off. Let's turn it on. We'll hit the setting button. We hit the poly button. Note that the display shows that polymetric is off. Let's rotate the data control counterclockwise to turn it on. We'll select the high tom track. Notice that the last step button is flashing and we're on page two. We look at page one, nothing's flashing. The reason it's flashing is that we've selected this as the last step. We could select another step, for instance, this is the last step, and all four of them would flash. But let's go back to this one, and we have the same last step on the other tom. We exit by hitting setting twice, and now let's listen to the beat with poly turned on. So those are the kind of complex rhythms that you can get 
when you turn the polymetric feature on. Also note that polymetric rhythms are different from polyrhythmic rhythms. Polyrhythmic rhythms are also known as Euclidean rhythms. Check out the Wikipedia page for Euclidean rhythms. These have the same number of steps for each track, but the notes are played as equidistant as possible from each other. An example would be a typical Latin rhythm for the claves. The notes would occur every three steps with one rest added at the end of the bar to make up the full 16 steps. In other words, the two rhythms sync up at the end of the bar by adding one or more rests as needed. And let me manually give you an example of that. We'll go to a different, simpler pattern. So that's polyrhythmic versus polymetric. Rand or random is the next feature we want to look at and this allows randomly played sounds to trigger on a preselected group of voices on any pre-programmed step that you wish to have the ability to hear random voices triggered. That's complicated to listen to anyway so let's just walk through how we set it up. Number one, we hit settings. Number two, we hit step button eight, which is the random. And number three, we're going to pick the voices in the group that we want to apply this random to. And we've selected all three toms. Finally, we've got to select steps that are candidate steps I've picked these four in the second page because there's nothing else hitting on those steps in any of the other voices. And at this point, we've identified our group, we've identified the steps that we could possibly have triggered, and we're going to hit settings twice, and it's set up. So let's listen to what that sounds like. You'll notice that when we played that, sometimes there was no sound at all. When there was a sound, it was one of these three voices, and which one it was was selected apparently randomly. Still, it's fairly musical. So to recap, we've identified the group of voices, and we've identified the steps at which this could happen, and the only other note is that the random step settings are stored on a per pattern basis. Prob or probability allows you to adjust the probability of a predefined step playing as programmed. This simulates how a drummer could miss a drum. Of course it can also be used to add notes that are only played sometimes on purpose. The range can be set from 0 to 100%. As a guide, zero means a programmed voice won't trigger. 50% allows voices to be played around half the time, while 100% will trigger the voice as programmed. Probability can be turned on and off per step. Here's how. Number one, we press the settings button. Number two, we press the prob button number nine. Select the voice you wish to have programmed. In this case, it's the clap that we're going to program. And then use the step keys and length navigation to enable probability on the steps you require. So we're going to go all the way to the end and then come back one, two, three, four. And so that's the beginning. The steps that have turned pink are the ones that are optional 
and so we've got one optional on the first page and we have two optional on the second page. We can adjust the probability range with the data control from 0 to 100 percent. Right now it's at 0 and we're going to leave it there for a moment and I'll show you why. Finally we can hit settings twice and we've exited. Now let's listen and I'm going to adjust the probability globally by moving the data mode to probability and here we go. And as you can see, if you select your steps correctly, that can be a pretty musical effect. The only thing I want to add to that is that the probability step settings, which ones are set to pink, are stored per pattern, but the amount is controlled globally. And again, where we have tempo, we can go to probability and control this during play as I did. So those are the three features that I wanted to bring out and I think they add a lot of variability to the drum parts. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.